Now, oil prices plunged to below $30 a barrel in early trade, the lowest level in 12 years, as oversupply and dollar strength concerns deepen. Now, the U.S. WTI crude dropped to $29.93 a barrel. There's, that's, of course, the lowest since December 2003. Brent declined as much as 3.8% to $30.34, and oil extended, of course, a 70% drop since June 2014, as volatility in Chinese markets fueled a route in global equities and U.S. stockpiles remained more than 120 million barrels above the five-year average. Now, Morgan Stanley says a rapid appreciation of the U.S. dollar may send Brent oil to as low as $20 a barrel. Oil is particularly leveraged to the dollar and may fall, may fall between 10 to 25 percent if the currency gains 5 percent. Now joining me in the studio to discuss the increasingly gloomy outlook for oil prices is the head of energy research at the EcoBank Group, Dolakpo Oni. And uh, Dolakpo, welcome back to the show uh, once again. Now, of course, oil futures tumbled below $30 per barrel today for the first time in 12 years. Now, some say it was a sentiment-driven uh, correction, while others say that the possibility of a $20 oil price does not sound so crazy anymore. How likely, Dolakpo, do you think uh, is it that we will see this again. Um, thank you for having me on your show. And um, I think the narrative is really quite strong. And um, there are two major reasons. Number one is the currency angle, which you mentioned. The fact is that the data or the economic data about the American economy shows that U.S. is still, I mean, growing pretty, uh, I'd say, strongly. And so the dollar will strengthen. And of course, that will send, make oil a lot more expensive. The other side is the fact that the market is still oversupplied significantly. So, um, I mean, we're talking about 2.3 million barrels per day oversupply. So that would definitely make things um, difficult. Mm. Now, Dolapo, what impact do you think, uh, 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 or what impact has the growing rift uh, between Saudi Arabia and Iran had on oil prices so far? Do you think it's had any impact at all? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's had the reverse because typically uh, intentions in the Middle East tend to uh, make oil prices a lot more expensive because everybody's worried about supply getting um, affected. But in this case, what we see is that the tensions may actually result in both parties, um, Saudi Arabia and Iran, actually trying to increase production and essentially engaging in what we, what we might call a price war, which would even send prices a lot lower. So it's having a, a negative impact instead. Mm. Now, what are the likely implications uh, to African producers if, of course, if at all the prices get to $20? Uh, uh, what are, what's going to happen to Africa's producers? I mean, the outlook is not good because if you look at most Af African producers, um, they're quite dependent on oil revenues. Um, Nigeria, be it Equatorial Guinea, be it Angola, be it Gabon, take, I mean, take, take a peek. Uh, most of them are exposed on the revenue side of government um, to oil and then also, also for um, employment generation, also for taxes and so many other aspects of the economy. So, I mean, the outlook is not good. If oil prices go a lot lower, government revenue will be affected. Ability to invest in infrastructure projects, which Africa really needs, will also be affected significantly and then they would have to borrow a lot more. So we're seeing a lot of them coming to the euro bond market and they would have to pay higher interest rates. Um, so, I mean, it's not a rosy picture in terms of um, funding, capex and infrastructure going forward. Mm. Now, the whole oil price saga is causing uh, oil companies, of course, a lot of pain. We heard that BP has announced 4,000 uh, job cuts. Of course, Brazil oil giant uh, Petrobras also said it's cutting its production and spending outlook. Now, what is the situation for Africa's oil players? I, I think it's the same thing across uh, in Africa as well. And um, I mean, if I speak clearly uh, directly about Nigeria, I think we've started to see some job cuts in some of the companies as well, um, upstream focus companies. But another interesting aspect we've seen is the fact that um, a lot of companies are now looking more intently at gas. Um, I mean, there's a strong gas to power drive um, in Western Africa, um, where there's been a lot of gas discoveries, Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, I mean, name it. Um, there's been a lot of gas discoveries and Equatorial Guinea. So there's a strong drive towards, so we're seeing oil companies that traditionally would typically, I mean, focus on the oil and flare the gas, now looking at ways to, and, you know, um, get more, va extract more value from gas. And um, that's sort of giving them another drive. But pretty much like what we've seen in other parts of the world. I mean, there's been a lot of job cuts. There's been a lot of fiscal discipline, which uh, possibly w w wasn't so strong before.
Now, Donald Paul, what is your opinion of what uh, is going to happen with OPEC? Of course, we hear they're calling for emergency meetings right now. Uh, uh, going forward, what is the expectation? You know, I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not particularly a fan of the, um, the, the idea of an emergency meeting because, again, the market right now is in a bit of a vulnerable state. And um, I think market, the market is really reacting to a lot of sentiments uh, at the moment. So the idea that an OPEC meeting or emergency meeting could be called, and the fact is, which we must face is, is that will Saudi Arabia come to that meeting? Will Iran come to that meeting? Um, th those, two co those two countries hold a very strong um, you know, um, impact on OPEC um, outlook or whatever will be decided at that meeting. Saudi Arabia has made it clear that they will not make any cut unless they get non-OPEC producers like Russia, US, Mexico, Canada to um, go and make the cut along with them. And then Iran is saying, look, Saudi Arabia should make the cuts so that they can increase their production. And we know that's not also not going to be possible with the tension between them. So the emergency meeting may not succeed, and it may send more jitters down the market and send prices sharply lo lower. So I think um, emergency meeting may not necessarily be needed at this point um, when we know what the position of the various parties are. Mm. Well, thank you so much for those insights, Dolakpo. Of course, he's joining us from our Lagos studios.